We're going to take a look at some more triggers for cloud functions now. So this is where we left off in the last video. We have this one cloud function that is callable using HTTP. The good thing about triggers in Firebase is that they can listen to and respond to a lot of different changes that we have. Let's say that someone registers a user in our application. A function can be called upon the register, not by the action inside of the browser, but it is triggered by the very action inside Firebase. So we're listening to things that are happening server side and not to actions taken by users. So there is a fundamental difference to that. And I'm going to display what we can do with this kind of stuff. So if we want to make a new cloud function, we can always just start off by writing exports and then the name of the function. So we have something called hello world uh, and we don't really need that anymore. Let's just delete it. And uh, we're going to make something called a uh, auth triggered function. This is just some name that we gave it, right? And I'm going to write functions because that's what uh, the const of here is called. So this is just a library, library that we're using. And then we're going to write auth. And then we're going to write user. And here we have some functions like uh, on create. So let's call this one. And I'm just going to do dot under dot notation. And if you go into the uh, inputs here, we get to uh, create either a function using a Lambda expression from a user or a user in the context. I'm just going to use user in a context and I'm going to create a scope here. So this is just another syntax for a function. Uh, we can rewrite this using uh, an anonymous function like this uh, or we could uh, use a named function. So we could say auth bound or whatever and then we would have a function down here. Um, it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to go with the Lambda expression here. So inside of the Lambda expression here, we can have some kind of action. So let's say that we want to write something to the console once this is being triggered. We can do that not using console.log, but using functions.logger. And then we can pick one of these. So let's just pick the one called log. And I'm just going to put the user in here. So the user has all kinds of data, but let's just put the entire user object into there. So if your functions are running uh, using the emulator, just like mine, you don't have to execute it all over again. You just have to write the uh, Firebase um, emulators uh, start. So just like I did here, Firebase emulators start, and then it's, it's got to boot up all the emulators. So if you haven't set it up, just go to the previous video and go through that walkthrough. So right now, we need to create some kind of user to see the function being triggered. So I'm just going to go to this localhost port 4000 and go to authentication, add a new user called Peter, and just uh, write Peter at peter.dk, whatever. And give him some great password here, uh, save. So now we've created a user, but not using our Angular application, right? This is no front end stuff we're doing here. This is purely back end. And we can see that we now have triggered a cloud function. As soon as the user was created on the back end, doesn't matter how, doesn't matter if someone is using the console or the admin SDK or the client SDK or whatever they're doing, we get a trigger here in our cloud function. So, of course, we're just locking things to the console right now. That's not very valuable. But, of course, we could do something with this. Uh, let's say that every single time someone creates a user, uh, we want to create a document of that user. Well, we can do that because we can trigger things inside of Firestore using our functions, but not using the client SDK for Firestore. Now, we're going to use the admin SDK for that. So if you're inside of the directory called FB video, I created a directory inside of that one called functions. Uh, so the functions uh, have their own package, the JSON, and it has the, its own node modules, of course. And so that's where we're going to install this new admin SDK. So just write npm i firebase admin like this. I'm going to write const admin equals require admin, Firebase admin. So now we've imported it here and uh, I'm going to write admin.initialize app 
Uh, for now, we're just going to put the project ID inside of here. Um, but there are a bunch of stuff we can fill out later. So project ID, uh, if stack 23, that's when I called my project. And inside of the uh, method now, we can write admin. And then we can call Firestore like this. And now we get a lot of different methods that we can use to manipulate the data inside of Firestore or read from Firestore or whatever we want to do. So let's say we want to go to a collection user. And then, uh, then we're going to make a document for this user. So let's just put the user.uid inside of here. And then just write a set. And then we can set some data. Uh, so let's say that the user was called uh, Peter. Let's just write uh, name user dot display name like this. Now we're gonna create a new user here, and it's gonna be called Bob Bob at Bob DK. Give him a password. Save. So now we have Bob in here, and if we go to file store here, notice that now we have Bob, and Bob has the same ID as he has inside of authentication here. So of course, this looks very similar to a feature you could make just using the client library by just waiting for the response of the promise of when a user creates an account and then write a document to Firestore. But there's the fundamental difference here. Because what if an admin creates a user? Well, there's all kinds of ways that you can create a user. But this one, will always find all of them because it is listening not to what a user is doing, like an end user is doing, what is happening inside of Firebase Auth. And it's like I mentioned previously, there are multiple triggers for Cloud Functions. So let's try and just display a trigger on Firestore events. So if we write the same syntax, exports, maybe just call it Firestore triggered function equals functions dot firestore now. We also can do triggers on the real time DB or whatever, uh, but let's just do firestore. And then we're going to put some kind of document path in here. So let's say that we have a collection of cats messages. If you write curly bracket just after the name of the collection here, and uh, that is just some kind of alias for an individual document in here. So let's just call this one document. And we're going to write on create here. So the on create, just like before, if you click control and space, you get these suggestions. So just make it uh, give you a lambda expression here. As long as we have the snapshot here, we can do what I want to display. So let's say that you create a document inside of this collection we now trigger this function and the snapshot is required to get some data so they can write const data equals snapshot dot data like this so this is just like inside of the client sdk it's the same syntax uh, if you want an individual field you can write const uh, my field data equals data dot message so let's say you have a message inside of uh, this document. The message content could be hello world. A message is just the name of the field. So let's uh, lock this one to the console. If you just write functions logger lock my field data like this. And now I'm going to go into our Firestore emulator here. So when you start a new collection, it's going to ask you, do you want to just make a document here already? And uh, we're going to make something with the message and we're going to make it say hello full stack and save this. So we can see that we now have the message hello full stack here. So not only can we listen to authentication changes, we can listen to changes inside of our data persistence. Uh, so this gives us a completely new possibilities for our application. So one of the new possibilities we have once we have this admin SDK inside of the cloud functions is that the admin SDK is leveraged beyond what the client SDK can do. So for example, the client SDK allows a user to delete themselves because that's what you would expect any user to be able to do inside of an application. But let's say that you're an admin and you want to delete a bunch of users. Well, you can do this with the admin SDK. So let's say you want to trigger this delete user. You can pick 
any user by ID, the client SDK cannot do that. They can only pick themselves. And you can also delete a bunch of users here. Just like in the signature here, you can see you just provide a string array of user IDs. So what we've achieved now is that we've been able to write server-side code. So this is code that the user does not have running inside of their own browser. That is, first of all, very important for any full-stack application. Uh, but second of all, we have the admin SDK that is leveraged beyond what the client SDKs can do. But we also have these custom triggers. So we can trigger based on events that would be otherwise completely unknown to us where we are just a client interacting with the Firebase application. So these elements are extremely important to creating very many features. And lastly, I'm just going to show you how to deploy these functions. Uh, first and foremost, you need to be logged in. I didn't show this in the previous video, but you need to write Firebase login. So you can just visit the URL that it gives you to log in, and then you'll be prompted with authentication with your Google account. Once you accept it, you'll get this one here, and now we can get back to the deployment. So when you're inside of your Firebase repository, I just called mine FB video, if you remember, you can write Firebase deep five. And right now we only have functions, right? So we can just write only functions like this. So you need to be on the pay as you go plan to deploy these. So if you're not, uh, you'll get an error with this one. Uh, but of course, you can just stay on the free plan and just use the emulators. And for local development, I still recommend just doing that. So in this instance, I still have the Hello World Cloud function uh, on my Firebase. Um, you can just delete whatever you have there if it's not important. I'm going to go do that. And remember that you're going to be using Node.js version 16. That's why I also recommend using Node.js version 16 when you are developing locally. And if you pull up your Firebase console, you should be able to see your uploaded cloud functions. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how we can use Express.js inside of our cloud functions.